holidays do we have left? We've done every holiday, right? Labor Day? <laughs> That's the white on Earth Labor Day. Everyone wears white and I it's a fiat. <laughs> I love Halloween. Oh, not only is was it an amazing opportunity to see um, Waverly and Winona spend some time together, but also because of the nature of the episode where we lose our memory in the fog, what emerged from that was this really awesome opportunity to almost go back to the innocence of the two characters. Waverly and Winona's childhood was challenging and her a heaviness that um, was always brought around the celebration and so they were never able to go and have fun. I feel that Waverly in her adult years, having dreamt about um, being a normal kid that could go and celebrate and just go trick-or-treating and enjoy the festivities as the others did um, is sort of now reclaiming it as an adult and saying we can still have a good time despite our history. I'm gonna watch the whole episode way differently now. <laughs> wow. And who are you? I have no idea. Mel and I were so stupid those days. We were just like, whoop, like, and, she, and Pal's going, more, more, hi, you're high on the thing, you're high on this stuff. And we were going, whoo, and it just totally, like, That was an excellent name. Pal Barsman. Uh, yeah, very good. Know. The genius that is Pal Barsman, you got a glimpse. I think it was really important to go back and touch on the Earp sisters. Just as an outsider and a, like a fan of the show watching it, I think even though when you step into the next chapter of your life. I think it's important to touch base with the people who have always been there and be like, I'm still here. Wow! You know what I remember about eight was when I said to you, next Halloween, I'm gonna be monster mashing my what? And like in the moment I did like a dance and your face, it was like the least sexy thing no. I've ever done. No, no, no. My but face in that, yeah, Yes, but in that moment I was like, I can never recover from this. No, I would never have looked to like you like you weren't sexy. You think I was looking at you like you weren't sexy? I think that's in um, your head. I think it's a, maybe a little narrative. You did like, like a little like, I did like a, a shimmy. And I think I and just then enjoyed I you. sort of wanted to die inside. It's like, this is why I don't dance. <laughs> Man, it feels like it's Halloween every day in Purgatory. Oh, the costumes. Well, did you, what was your costume again? I had the shorties outfit. That wasn't the costume. I Britney had Spears. Britney Spears. Oh. And then I had Supergirl. Was it Supergirl? I hope so. Oh, That's okay. What I... Or was it for copyright reasons? Was it it was super kick. Yeah, yeah, super kick. <laughs> there you go. Happy Halloween, Premium Rhapsody. Yours is amazing. Yeah, incredible. Walking my trailer and seeing that Freddie Mercury outfit yeah. was just, it was so killer. Like the amount of detail that these guys put together to make that outfit was just, it was incredible. And I just put it on and I was like, I had the microphone and I must have, I was just doing all the We got, we got a picture and, in our group oh, chat. Yeah. Oh, I was God. like, I couldn't wait to start doing the Freddie Mercury poses and uh, it was incredible. Jeez Louise, what is going on with you two? Pat, bring him down. Are you okay, Jeff? Hey. It was really fun to put that costume back on and it just brought back so many memories of like the first season and seeing it for the first time and you know I, I think Nicole's wardrobe for me has always informed so much of her character just something happens to you when you put on a uniform and, and the uniforms are different they make you feel different things and make me feel different things and um, it was just fun like it was in such good fun what a way to bring it back you know what? I loved wearing your outfit as well. Yes, that's right! I felt like a really tiny little powerhouse. <laughs> yeah. Everyone kept being like, you look so small. <laughs> Probably because they're used to seeing me in it, which is such a <laughs> thing. Maybe. maybe that's what it was, yeah. but like, yeah. Did you feel strong? Yeah. yeah. I loved the shoes. Yes! The, the shoes that you, yeah, the boots. Um, they are so sturdy and you feel very much, yeah, you, you do feel very grounded mm -hmm. in it, which is cool. Yeah, that's cool. I'm so glad you got to experience that. That's yeah. very cool.
I'm kind of sad that I didn't get to dress up. Yeah. I, I had to be in that weird skull boy disguise for Doc, grabbing my crotch. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> I think that originally was written as like a joke. Like it was just Emily writing a side joke. Because initially it was like, Doc, we, we, when we return from the alternate universe, they're like, what about Doc? Is Doc okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'd feel it in my crotch. And then like, I thought that was like a one-off joke, but I think it got such good reception that she gave me a crotch power as a result. And now I have to live with this. There's probably pills for that, but. <laughs> I am sorry about a lot of things, Robin. I mean, it kind of breaks my heart even talking about it now, because it's just so sad for Jeremy. He's such a good guy, he's such a big heart, but he's always, he was always taking care of his friends in the meanwhile holding on to the secret, not wanting to burden everybody with the fate of Robin, that when you actually get to see it, it's like, oh, he's just like working on this on his own day after day, trying to think how to bring back his memory and just to like make sure that he has some semblance of a normal life. I don't know, when I, when I, when I first read that, I definitely felt really bad for the guy because it's just like, oh, but he, understandably, he doesn't want to burden people. Everybody's dealing with all their stuff and Black Badge is doing its own thing. And I don't know, I really love that story for that. It just kind of shows how much Jeremy actually cares about his friends, also cares about his lover. Like, it, it's just, just, he's such a beautiful man. What was it like working with a different actor? That was an interesting process. Paolo, our director, the way he approached it was like, Robin can't form new memories. Like, this is what he's suffering from. It's this constant, like fish, like a goldfish syndrome. Like every five seconds, a new thing is forming. So he played it very like, he has amnesia permanently. Black badge is on the case. They helped me once. They'll help me again. Yeah. Somehow it worked. Somehow in the end, it worked. I had a question mark. Period. Period. Exclamation mark. Exclamation point. Dallas. You dip. Untie me! Doc understands that uh, the way Eamon was treating these guys, it isn't right. So, um, you know, out with the old, in with the new. And uh, Doc's, you know, he wants them to have the freedom that he's had. So he feels like they deserve it and he puts the trust in the demons. But also, you know, Doc is trying to broker peace. And this is what I'm watching him yesterday in 406. It was like, uh, this is his journey. He's trying to like make the town safe by not just killing everything, because he understands. And I think that Eamon, Eamon's the old school way of thinking, and Doc's just trying to bring his, he's trying to be a good guy. I think this whole season for me, it's about letting go of the past. And uh, for Doc to finally be able to do that, and uh, it's not just the moral high ground of, of yeah, when, you know, when Winona shot Holt in the back, and that was kind of the, the pivotal point where it's, the uh, divide uh, becomes apparent, but, it's easier for him to say, hey, I'm gonna let go of the past and let's move forward and make a life together because at the end, you know, she's gotta be the one who saved the day. So, you know, it's, it ain't easy being the hero.